everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becca and I'm really excited to be hanging out with you this week because we are going to be talking about normal houseplant behavior. There are certain houseplant behaviors that are common and normal and there are some that are common and abnormal and this is something that I've been thinking about a lot especially in my recent escapade with thrips I've just had a lot of thoughts on like is this plant supposed to be doing this or is this a side effect or a result of the infection of thrips so I'm going to talk today about normal and common and this is the positive side of things so definitely let me know if you want to hear the common but abnormal side of things next and I will happily make that video too. Our first common but normal behavior in houseplants is corking and corking is a situation where the plant has started to form a woody stem and you might notice this towards the bottom of your houseplants. The stem is just starting to get a kind of like a bark look to it. It's just looking a little bit harder. It's looking really anything but green. <laughs> and this is a common but normal behavior because plants will do this as they age to support the weight of itself. So sometimes plants will get very, very top heavy and if you don't have any sort of thicker base on it, it can very easily fall over and just snap in half. It's really common in ficus. Ficus are actually trees. And I think that I commonly forget this because I usually only see them like no taller than myself but if you travel somewhere like California or Hawaii you will see that some of the ficus that we hold as houseplants are actually very big trees in those places okay the next normal and common houseplant behavior is to have different shaped roots so this one is inspired by a post that I saw on reddit in the plant clinic subreddit I think it was or maybe it was like what's wrong with my plant but anyway they took a photo of the string of hearts rhizomes and and we're asking what it was and if it was normal. And I want to say I also had a moment similar to this very, very early in my houseplant collecting. I actually bought some snake plants from somebody and I was separating them and repotting them. And I saw that the roots were like a dark reddish color, like a reddish brown color. And my limited knowledge of houseplants at that point told me that dark roots and you know, anything other than like white roots was a bad thing. So I thought that perhaps this plant had some sort of rot or something like that. And so I remember taking to my Instagram, it was like one of the first things I put on my plant Instagram, Dayla Plants, is this normal? And everybody was like, yes, this is normal. Sansevieria have reddish roots. Houseplant roots are going to look different. So they're not all going to be white stringy roots. Sometimes they will look really thick and bulbous. For example, if you have a ZZ plant, they have rhizomes, which also the string of hearts has. And a rhizome is basically in the simplest form, just a ball of water holding capacity under the soil and plants that have those are a lot more drought tolerant because they can hold water in those bulbs. There are also a lot of plants that will throw off aerial roots and specifically the Monstera deliciosa is a big one for that. I oftentimes see people asking what the heck are these things growing off of my plant? Do I cut them off? Do I bury them in the soil? Do I put them in a cup of water? And in regards to that question really quickly, I'll just say any of the above would probably work. The Monstera does not necessarily need to have those aerial roots. It's basically just a mechanism to help it climb or just stabilize itself. So if you don't like them, you can cut them off. Or what I normally do is I just bury them into the soil. And it might look a little bit funny, but it is just a part of the plant and it's giving the plant more opportunity opportunities to hydrate and anchor itself. So I like to keep them. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, which is the all-in-one platform to build your online brand and share about your business online. I love building websites with Squarespace because it is honestly so easy and like kind of fun. Like remember on MySpace when you used to like make a page and like do all this like low-key coding and stuff? <laughs> Squarespace is similar except no coding and anything like that. So really anybody can walk in off the streets and build a website on Squarespace because they make it so simple with their drag and drop templates. I really love using our Squarespace website to sell merch for Potted Together. We actually just came out with a new merch piece for our Brave Yet Controversial Patreon tier. It's also really easy to set up email campaigns if you want to keep up with your audience and share news 
or announcements. If you ever wanna start blogging, Squarespace also has a really great blogging features with commenting so that you can have conversations with readers in the comments and all of these types of things. So if you're interested in checking out Squarespace for your website, you can head to squarespace.com slash Becca De La Plans to start a free trial. And when you are ready to launch your website, you can use the code Becca De La Plans for 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Our next common and normal behavior is old leaves falling off as the plant matures. Sometimes yellow leaves can indicate that the plant is getting underwatered, overwatered. A lot of times it means there's a pest. And honestly, probably most of the time, it just means that the plant is putting new energy into new growth. And you will oftentimes also see like black or brown tips on the ends of plants, like spider plants, for example. They oftentimes will get brown tips just because they are putting energy into new growth. And those older leaves just aren't as important. So sometimes the plant will kill off or just bring less to older leaves in order to foster an environment for new growth and new leaves to come forth. And this is common and it's normal. You'll see this across a lot of different types of plants. So pretty much every plant will at some point drop leaves. And you know, when a plant is killing off a leaf or when a leaf is dying, it turns yellow first and it's just a common thing to see. And that might raise a lot of red flags for you because we think yellow leaf and then we instantly jump to our plant is dying. I want you to take a moment whenever you see a yellow leaf and think to yourself, where is this yellow leaf located? And if it is located towards the bottom of the plant, so that means it's an older leaf because plants will oftentimes, they will put off new leaves like this. So the stalk is getting longer or taller and so the leaves towards the pot, the ones closest to the pot, closest to the soil are the older ones. And if you have those leaves turning yellow, it's probably just a normal part of your plant growing and moving that energy to the new growth. Sometimes it can also just be an indication that you're not giving the plant what it needs. So it's going to kill off those older leaves first. So if you know that you have been diligent in caring for your plant, you have a great watering routine, you know what you're doing, you know it's pest free and you see those yellow leaves don't worry about it. But if you know that you've been a little bit sporadic with your watering, maybe you haven't checked for pests lately and you see those yellow leaves, maybe it's a moment to check out the plant, take a closer look or just give it more attention. Sometimes it's just the plant signaling and sometimes it's just the plant doing what plants do. And our last common and normal plant behavior is trailing plants having smaller leaves as they get longer. So trailing plants are also oftentimes climbing plants and one of the biggest things in this is like pothos or heartleaf philodendrons, all of the different heart-shaped philodendron leaves like the Brazil, the micans, the lemon lime. As they trail, you will notice that the leaves are getting smaller and smaller. This is nothing to worry about because it's just a product of the plant not having something to grow on. So the health of the plant remains completely fine, but just the environment of the plant could be better to support bigger leaves, of course. And if you wanted the plant to continue having large leaves, I would suggest letting it climb onto something. And that doesn't necessarily have to be a pole or a plank. It could also just be pinning it up on your walls as it's growing bigger. Just giving it a place to go can help support that larger leaf growth. But basically when the plant does get stringier at the bottom, it's just indicating that it is looking for something. It's searching. If the plant is actively looking for something, it makes sense that it's not going to put effort into, you know, putting out leaves. So sometimes you'll see plants have runners. My lighting is severely shifting. We're towards the end of the day. <laughs> and I finally had a moment to film this. So sorry about the shifting lighting and the shadows and stuff, but. Anyway, it's really common and it doesn't mean that your plant is dying or perishing in any way. It's more of a cosmetic thing. So if you don't like the way that that looks, as soon as you see the plant like starting to get a little bit stringy, you can just cut that off and it will promote bushier growth. Those leaves might not necessarily be huge, but they're not going to be really long stringy vines with no leaves on them. Pretty much every trailing philodendron in my collection is doing that right now. And you can see specifically with this one that's from the thumbnail, these leaves at the top are so big and beautiful. And then there comes a point, like probably about like right here where it got much stringier and these leaves are much smaller. And like this is definitely not as pretty as this in my opinion, but I just haven't had the desire to put it on a pole or trail it along my walls or just like 
create an environment where it can like climb and grip onto something. I prefer the look of a trailing plant for this type of plant. So I'm just letting the leaves like stay smaller. And what I've done as they have grown is just cut. So as you can see here, I made a cut there and it ended up branching. And now we have this little section here, which admittedly isn't a very impressive part of the plant. So I probably would cut it again, but I don't know. It's just like a fun opportunity, maybe even to have like little vases of trailing plants around your house. And also they're a great thing to bring to plant swaps. People are always looking for trailing plants. And so anyway, it's fun, it's free and um, great way to make more plants in your collection if you're wanting to fill up more green spaces. Um, but again, it is common and it's normal for plants as they are trailing to have smaller and smaller leaves. There's a lot in house plants that feels really kind of scary if you don't know what you're looking at. And we can oftentimes jump to the worst conclusion, but a lot of the time the plant is just doing what plants do. And if it's different from what we've normally seen, um, it can be scary and we can worry and that's totally normal. And I love that people love their plants so much to worry about them. But a lot of the times it's just how the plant is growing and changing as it matures, which is a really beautiful thing. So I hope that you learned something from this video. If you did, please be sure to share it with a planty friend or give us a like to let YouTube know that you enjoyed and found this video helpful. And comment down below if you have anything to add to anything that I said. I love for my YouTube videos to be a resource for the community to learn from each other. So yeah, if you have anything to say in addition or supporting anything I said, would love to hear it. And thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye.